This is part two for the review for the chapter eight test. So we're on problem number seven, page 563, number 69 and 71. In 69 and 71, we want to raise to a power a complex number in polar form. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to rewrite one plus i in complex or in a polar form. So we now know that r is just our square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, so it's the square root of 2. Theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 1 over 1, which is pi over 4. Since this initial complex number is in quadrant 1, pi over 4 is the angle that I'm going to use. So z is equal to square root of 2 cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. The way de Moivre's theorem works, since we're going to raise this to the 20th power, all I have to do is raise the square root of 2 to the 20th power, and then multiply each of these angles by 20. So I get 20 pi over 4. I'm going to do some simplifying, though. Uh, the square root of 2 raised to the 20th power, that's the 2 to the 1 half to the 20th power, which is going to be 2 to the 10th. And then 20 pi over 4 is just 5 pi. So 2 to the 10th power is 1024. The cosine of pi, 5 pi is negative 1. And the sine of 5 pi is 0, so that i goes away. So the final answer is just negative 1024. Now let's go do the other problem. Let's do this. All right, so first, r is going to be the square root of 2 squared to 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is, let's see, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4. Theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 2 over 2 radical 3, which is the same as 1 over radical 3. And the inverse tangent of 1 over radical 3 is 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. And since this is also in quadrant 1, remember again, if you're graphing this point on the complex plane. It works just like graphing any other ordered pair. So if they're both positive, you're in quadrant one. So I'm going to leave pi over six as the answer. So the polar form is four cosine pi over six plus i sine pi over six. Now we're going to raise everything to the fifth power. So we're going to do four to the fifth, and then we're going to do cosine 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. And now we're going to simplify. Let me extend my line down. 4 to the fifth is, again, 1024. The cosine of 5 pi over 6, it's in quadrant 2, so it's negative, is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be positive 1 half. Don't forget your i. Now I'm going to distribute the 1024. Well, when I do that, I'm going to get negative 512 square root of 3, because 1024 divided by 2 is 512, plus 512i. And that's all that I can do with that answer. In Problem 8, page 563, number 81 and 82. We want to find the square roots of 4, the square root of 3 plus 4i. In number 82, it's the same complex number, but we're going to find the cube roots. So it's going to change the problem a little bit. So for this one, we're going to find the square roots, which means we're only going to find two answers. Again, we're going to start this like all the rest of the problems. First, we need to find r. And we're going to find out that when we square this, we get 48 
plus 16, which is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. And theta is going to be the inverse tangent of, again, 1 over the square root of 3. And since this is in quadrant 1, we already know the answer is 30 degrees or pi over 6. So the, compl or the polar form is z equals 8 cosine of pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. All right, so now the way that this one works when we're finding the square roots, we're going to start by square rooting 8. And then we have this little formula for the way that the angles work. It's always the angle plus 2 pi over n, where n is the root. So we're going to do pi over 6, and I should put a k there, plus 2 pi times 0, which is going to be 0, divided by 2. And since this goes away, we have pi over 6 divided by 2, which is not pi over 3, it's pi over 12. So when k equals 0, we're going to get cosine of pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. Since pi over 12 is not one of our special angles, we're not going to be able to get the exact answer. So we're actually just going to leave this as 2 radical 2, because that's what the square root of 8 is, cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. So now when we go do k is 1, I'm going to come back up here. Now we're going to change this to 1, so we're going to get pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Pi over 6 plus 2 pi is going to be 13 pi over 6. And 13 pi over 6 divided by 2 is 13 pi over 12. So the next one is going to be 2 square root of 2. Cosine 13 pi over 12 plus i sine 13 pi over 12. And that's all we need to do for that problem because all we needed were the square roots. For number 82, most of the stuff we're doing is the same, except we're going to find the cube roots, which changes the problem just a little bit, but not a lot. So this is our complex number, 4 square root of 3 plus 4i, where we already know r is 8 and theta is pi over 6. But since we're finding the cube roots, we're going to be doing this, and we're going to be dividing by 3. So we're going to start with pi over 6 plus 0 divided by 3, which is going to give me cosine of pi over 18 plus i sine pi over 18. Also, not a special angle. It's just that this time, the cube root of 8 is 2. So it's going to be 2 cosine pi over 18 plus i sine pi over 18. That's what, what you get when k is 0. When k is 1, now we're going to go back and we're going to change this to 2 pi. So I'm going to get 13 pi over 6 divided by 3, which is going to be 13 pi over 18. And again, since that's not a special angle, I'm not going to try to simplify it because I can't get an exact answer. Since we're finding the cube roots, we're going to find k is 0, 1, and 2. So for the next one, I'm going to change this now. We're going to multiply, or we're going to add instead of 2 pi, we're going to add 4 pi. So now, let's see, I get 24, 25 pi over 6, which becomes 25 pi over 18. I'm just doing the fractions quickly in my head. Remember that if you can't do them that quickly, you always can do the fractions in your calculator. Ignore the pies though when you're doing when you're uh, simplifying the fractions because otherwise the calculator will just give you a decimal answer. So now for k equals two, we get two cosine of 25 pi over 18 plus i sine of 13 pi over oops not 13 that should be 25. Sorry about that. 
and those are the cube roots of four cube or square root of three plus four i. When dealing with parametrics and needing to eliminate the parameter, remember t is called the parameter. We one of the ways that you can do the problem if it helps you is by graphing it and looking what the graph looks like. I'm going to do this problem algebraically though. One of the things that we know from our dealings with trigonometry is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. That is a Pythagorean theorem of trigonometry that is always true. Now, what we can do is we can change those x's to t's and the reason we can do that is because it really doesn't matter what I call the variable. I can call it x, I can call it t, I can call it theta, I can call it mu, I don't know, whatever whatever letter of the alphabet or Greek alphabet you want to come up with. So the way this works is I need to solve this for sine t. Well sine t is going to be x over 2 So I'm going to plug in x over 2 here, and since it's squared, I'm going to have to square it when I'm done. And then I want to solve this for cosine t. Well, cosine t is going to be y over 2. So I get plus y over 2 squared. So I get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And it turns out that that's just the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4. If you had graphed this in parametric mode, you would have gotten a circle of radius 2. But not all of these come out to be a circle. Let's look at problem number 14, where x is equal to 2 cosine t, and y is equal to 3 sine t. You'll notice that in the previous problem, the number being multiplied by the trig function was the same for both x and y. But, oops, sorry, down here, they're not the same. And if you kind of remember how this worked in class, you're going to realize right away that it's going to be an ellipse. You could graph it in parametric mode and figure out what the answer is. Now, that trig identity that we're using, it doesn't matter if sine comes first or cosine comes first. There's no rule that says which one comes first. Because addition is commutative, so it doesn't matter in what order you write this. So cosine t is actually going to be x over 2, and sine t is going to be y over 3. So we're going to find out that this is the equation of the ellipse, x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9. In number 10, page 546, 25, and 26, we want to turn these polar coordinates back into rectangular coordinates. The formula for turning polar back into rectangular coordinates is x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Well, I know r and theta. r is 5 and theta is negative 2 pi over 3. I just need to find the x and y coordinates in rectangular form. So x is going to equal 5 cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. Since negative 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 4, the cosine will be positive, and it's going to be positive 1 half. So the x coordinate is 5 halves. Or if you want to tell me it's 2.5, that's fine. y is going to equal 5 times the sine of negative 2 pi over 3. In the quadrant 4, sine is negative, so it's going to be 5 times negative square root of 3 over 2, which is going to be negative 5 square root of 3 over 2. So the rectangular coordinates are 5 halves, negative 5 the square root of 3 over 2. Now in number 26, the polar coordinates are 2 comma 5 pi over 6. So x is going to equal 2 cosine of 5 pi over 6. Since 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2, the cosine is going to be negative, and it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. 
So negative square root of 3 is the x-coordinate. And y is going to be 2 sine of 5 pi over 6. And in quadrant, 2 sines are positive, so it's going to be 2 times positive 1 half, which is 1. So the rectangular coordinates are negative square root of 3, comma, 1. In number 11, page 546, number 36 and 38, we want to take these rectangular coordinates, x and y, and change them back into polar coordinates. So the little formulas we have are, first you do r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I'm going to get the square root of 27 plus 9, which is the square root of 36, which is 6. Before I go find theta, Remember to ask yourself what quadrant you're working in. This is in quadrant 4. So we want to remember the answer we get needs to be an angle in quadrant 4. It doesn't matter if that fourth quadrant angle you give me is positive or negative as long as it's in quadrant 4. Theta is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. Well, this is really the same thing as negative 1 over square root of 3. We've run across this a lot. This makes sense that it's going to be in the fourth quadrant, because in the fourth quadrant, um, tangents are negative. And when you do this in your calculator, you find out it's 30 degrees or pi over 6. So it's negative pi over 6. If, however, you want to give me the positive quadrant 4 angle, it is also 11 pi over 6. I'll accept either of those. So it's either 6 negative uh, pi over 6 or you have to tell me that it's 6 comma 11 pi over 6. It's got to be one of those two answers. Now let's go look at number 38. r is going to be the square root of negative square root of 6 squared plus negative square root of 2 squared. Remember, when you square them, the negatives go away. When you square a radical, they cancel. So you're really just left with the square root of 6 plus 2, which is the square root of 8. And the square root of 8 is 2 radical 2. For theta, this is in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, tangents are positive. So you're going to get negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 6. And those two negatives cancel. If it helps you, remember that what you can do is you can put this into your calculator in degree mode. If you put it in in degree mode, it's going to tell you that the answer is 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. But remember, this is in quadrant 3, and pi over 6 is in quadrant 3. The third quadrant angle is 7 pi over 6. So you have to tell me the answer is 2 radical 2 comma 7 pi over 6. In number 12, page 569, 4 and 6, they want us to eliminate the parameter. They probably also ask you to graph it, and you can graph it in parametric mode. Remember when you graph it, though, you pay attention to the uh, restriction on the parameter, because if the problem on the test is which graph is the right one, you want to make sure you pay attention to that and change your window to, to such. Well, for this part, we just need to eliminate the parameter. That's, I'm just going to do the algebraic work here. So in order to eliminate the parameter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for t. And then we're going to substitute it into the second equation. The reason we're going to do that is because we want, to, we want an equation that says y equals something at the end. So I'm going to add 4. And then I'm going to divide by 6. And now we're going, to we're going to substitute that into y equals 3t. I end up getting x plus 4 over 2. Or you can write that as 1 half x plus 2. So it turns out that the parametric equation, x equals 6t minus 4, y equals 3t, is really just the linear equation, y equals 1 half x plus 2. Let's do this again for number 6. x is equal to 2t plus 1, and y is equal to t plus 1 half squared. We could figure out pretty quickly 
that this parametric equation is not linear. It's going to be quadratic. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to solve the first equation for t. So x minus 1 is equal to 2t. x minus 1 over 2 is t. And then we're going to substitute it into the second equation. So y is equal to x minus 1 over 2 plus 1 half squared. Even though we're dealing with fractions, I want you to notice that those fractions have a common denominator. So I'm going to get x minus 1 plus 1 all over 2, which is just x over 2. And when you square that, you get x squared over 4. So this is just the quadratic equation, y equals 1 fourth x squared. In the last problem, number 13, page 570, number 49 and 52, when you have an equation that's already in polar form and you want to rewrite it in parametric form, it's actually really easy, even though it kind of looks nasty. So in 49, I want to rewrite 2 raised to the theta over 12 in parametric form. And the formula for parametric form is x is equal to f of t cosine t and y equals f of t sine t. This just means take the original function and replace the variable with a t and then tack on a cosine t at the end. And that's the answer for x. This one, for the y-coordinate, it's going to be f of t sine t. And then if you want to know what that graph looks like, you graph it under these restrictions. Remember, this parametric equation, if you graph it, should have the exact same shape as this polar graph, and we know how to graph both. So now let's very quickly do 52. r is equal to 2 raised to the sine theta. So x must be 2 sine t cosine t. y must be 2 sine t sine t. And that's it. And again, that graph of that parametric equation should have the exact same shape as the polar equation 2 raised to the sine theta. And that is the review for chapter 8.